Hey there. Oh my goodness. We are going to have a fun time today. We are going to be talking about Jenga Tower Security. What in the world are we talking about? I think anybody who is an MSP or even in the vendor space understands Jenga Tower Security. We will get into that in just a minute, but I am super excited. I've got my friends here from Citricom. We've got Zane Conkle, CEO and founder, and John Tippett, who's the COO. Thank you, gentlemen, for chatting with me today for just a few minutes. You're welcome. Excited yeah. to be here. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for having us, Absolutely. My pleasure. All right. So Jenga Tower Security, that is what I named this because I talk to MSPs every single week, probably about a dozen a month. And what I'm hearing is that the traditional approach to creating a cybersecurity stack is to stack a bunch of tools on top of each other, hopefully best in class, best in breed solutions, stack them on top of each other, hope that they play nicely on the playground and go from there. So this presents a little bit of a challenge, right? Are these tools gonna play nicely with each other? Let's hope that they do. Then do they each have their own single pane of glass, which I always chuckle when I hear single pane of glass because how many single panes are there? A whole lot. Um, and then we've got security pieces that aren't necessarily built to actually cover all of the gaps. So is that what you are hearing as well as you as you talk to MSPs in the marketplace? Yeah, I think that's exactly what we're hearing. You know, the, the struggle is, is, is very real for MSPs. And if you look, you know, when we're talking to our, our partners or even the MSP community uh, more broadly, you know, really what MSPs care about is how, how uh, you know, how can I secure my customers and do it confidently? And, you know, how do we grow our business? And, and those, are the, those are the things that MSPs really care about. Uh, and if you look at the security aspect, which you're pushing on, the answer today is to take, you know, a host of, uh, you know, legacy tools, tools that have been around for a while, and piece them together. And, you know, I'd say what's made this difficult for MSPs to, you know, if you say their goals are to secure their customers, grow their business, what's making that harder than any than ever before is the fact that MSPs are now supporting customers in a distributed workforce, hmm. a distributed or, distributed or hybrid workforce. And we've been talking about that for a while. And the, the question though is, or what we're not talking about is what is the impact that is having on MSPs achieving these goals? Uh, while at the same time that, you know, you, you can't uh, discount the fact that the threat, the threat landscape has become more, more hostile than ever uh, while the attack surface is growing. And so if you, if you say, okay, those are the goals, how do we go solve, solve for that? It's exactly what you're pushing on. We've got to go find a long list of, of vendors and point solutions, single tools to pull together to try to accomplish securing our customers. And the problem with that is it actually competes with the other goal of growing your business. You spend all kinds of time evaluating vendors, evaluating solutions, trying to figure out how to pull them together. And it's just a real challenge. Uh, and John, I know you've been, I know you're hearing the same thing even on the, on the market side. Yeah, no question. I think, I think it's well said. And, and, and to expand on that exactly back to your point about the Jenga tower, when you think about the dynamic that's changed and now the workforce is distributed, as MSPs, we've gone from a single perimeter and a single edge to multiple different perimeters. People are at home. That's another edge to the network. Uh, people bring their own applications, bring their own devices. That The rules have just totally blown out what the traditional network was. And the solutions largely available for MSPs today are, are built for uh, built to solve problems before that change. Uh, the, 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 the traditional UTMs and, and all these different, uh, you know, VPN is the way you connect, or maybe we, we go you know, straight to Azure sometimes. And it's, it's interesting that that leads to the Jenga tower is, all, to Zane's point, I need to make sure everyone's connected and secure while I'm growing the business. Well, as I think about what does connected mean, I need this, this, this. Okay, now I need secured. Well, on-site is one thing, off-site's another IOT devices is yet another. And so each one of them has a, a unique requirement that, that leads to this, uh, this tool sprawl of like, I need another tool, another tool, another tool. And now to your point, you've got this Jenga tower of software and solutions just trying to simply meet a business goal. 
And that's one of the things that I love about talking to both of you is that you're you're coming from a deep understanding of the MSP world. Um, and so, so John, I I would have to rewind to listen, but you may have just referred to yourself as an MSP, and I catch myself doing that. So, <laughs> as an MSP, I think this, and I, I chuckle because I do it myself, but I think that's so important because the MSP landscape brings with it some really unique challenges that if if you were simply the the, the CISO at a Fortune 500 company, yes, that is a daunting task, but I almost feel like that's easier than being an MSP today because it is a very, you've got multiple infrastructures, you've got multiple operating systems, you've got lines of business applications, some of which you, you can't lock down the way you should be able to from a security standpoint. So I love that you're, you're coming at it almost almost, this is my way of saying it, MSP first, and then how do we make security work with an MSP, within the MSP world? So is that, do you feel like that's one of the unique pieces of Control One and, and perhaps why, you know, the large players inside of the world, like the Cisco's, maybe haven't quite wrapped their head around it because they don't necessarily, they don't play in the MSP space as much as you do? Yeah, no, I think that's I think that's exactly right. And if you think about who Cisco and, and these large vendors are building for, it is for the Fortune 100, for the CISOs at these companies. They have a single environment that they need to manage. They have a lot of control over the environment. And if you look at MSPs, you know, John and I both used to run an MSP practice. We get it. The, the challenge is you're managing, exactly as you shared, dozens of customers, different verticals, different line of business applications. And at the MSP, you don't have the same ability that a traditional CISO would have where you can go in and dictate or mandate to a customer, you shall not run these applications or you shall not access these, these sites. Like it just doesn't work that way. Um, and so it, it really does put MSPs in a challenging spot. And I think what you said is actually dead on. We, Citricom has always taken the approach of what are the challenges in the market that MSPs face? That's why we exist. You know, we, we, I don't want to spend a lot of time. If you go back when we, most people know Citricom as a VoIP provider or UCAS provider now. And when I started Citricom, I never woke up and well, I didn't wake up one morning and say, man, I really like to be in the VoIP business in the telecom space. Um, that's, that's like so far from my mind. But running an MST, you know, we saw that there is a huge need in the market for a solution that was MSP specific, um, that that allowed MSPs to sell voice into their customer base and, and did it in a way that aligned to the way that MSPs sell and support services. And so this is really a continuation of, of our mission to, as we've said, connect the modern workforce. And we're yet doing it yet again here, as we've heard from the community that look, the, this distributed workforce is, is killing us. Th three big pain points we hear from MSPs. We, we already talked about the workforce has changed. And the challenges that brings, we could dig much deeper there, the threat landscape, but also even the labor crunch. It's making it hard for MSPs to not only retain talent, uh, but also to find new highly skilled talent. And so when you think about all the tools that we're talking about here, you've got to have highly skilled individuals on payroll to manage that. And so how can we solve these problems as an organization? And that's what led us down the path to connectivity and, uh, and security here. And so we can talk about what the solution is, but that, I think, just to your question, it definitely is MSP focused and it always starts with the partners, with this community. That's why we exist. I love it. So I would imagine then, just like you didn't wake up one day and say, hey, let's let's sell VoIP. You didn't wake up six or eight months ago and say, hey, let's sell security. Like it wasn't it wasn't, hey, I'm going to jump on the security bandwagon. It was I'm hearing this problem over and over and over again. I think we can solve it. And now you have. So so tell us a little bit about Control One. What is it? Who is it right for? Perhaps who is it not a fit for? Yeah, and, and I'll insert one more interesting point there. I'm, I'm sure I probably did say as an MSP, and it's it's interesting, as Zane just said, this really is a community. Like it, 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 it MSPs, is a, it's a big family. If, if you're a managed services provider, the, the successful MSPs lean on one another, learn from one another, they, you know, they get content from folks like you. And it's important that we all feel like we're trying to solve the same problem. We're all trying to help businesses grow and we're doing it in a way where we're the outsourced solution to Zane's point where you can't dictate. And uh, to your to your point and your question, I'll uh, I'll bridge back over and, and, and move towards 
control one. But yes, it's exactly like you said. We didn't say, let's go enter the security space. One of the unique differentiators of Citricom as an organization is that, as Zane mentioned, you know, we set out to solve problems for MSPs. We did that all in-house. Everything at Citricom on the UCAS side is our own intellectual property. It's our code base. It's our employees. It's our infrastructure. And we also lived through these same changes. Like our workforce also became distributed. Our, our infrastructure has grown multiple data centers and we, we have the same challenges and we can see the, the, you know, we have the ability and the fortune that we can reach out to these enterprise solutions and, and, and achieve them unlike other smaller businesses can. But that allows us to see how challenging and clunky and difficult they actually are and, and pair that to the conversations we have because, you know, voice and communications is highly dependent on the network we hear firsthand how challenging it is to keep everyone connected and keep it moving. And so we watched over the last couple of years and saw this challenge and just realized there's, there's not anyone that's, that's really starting with the problem and, and looking at it through the lens of, of providing managed services and saying, how should it be solved? And uh, that's, that's sort of the genesis of the idea of we can, we can do something about this. Uh, and that led to control one. So yeah, I think Zane, I mean, back to where you were going to go, I, I just think I wanted to connect the dots there yeah. about how we got into saying like, we can do something here. Uh, it's not just for our company. Like we can actually help the whole community with a new product concept here. Yeah, I think that, that's right. And so to your, to your question, Jennifer, you know, can, what is control one, you know, in a simplest form, control one is a single platform that unifies network and security. And it's made up of, of several modules. We can talk through those and just dozens of capabilities. And if you think about the capabilities that are included in Control One, these are usually solution or these capabilities. Uh, typically, you have to go out and find a single vendor to um, to procure, you know, one, one of these capabilities. So we, we can run through those. But at, at the end of the day, what does Control One do? It's we really believe it. It is transforming and will transform the way that MSPs manage uh, and secure networks. And so it, it does that by redefining the way that we think about and approach access. We can talk about that. And, but it, it's, I think the easiest way to think about it is we flip the model on its head and Control One shifts the corporate network from being location centric, which worked two years ago. Everybody came to the office and business, you know, all business activity took place around a physical location. That was the corporate network. You know, the corporate network revolved there. And so the, the corporate network was location centric and we've now made it cloud centric. So location no longer matters. And so if you look at, if you look at control one, um, I mentioned there are several modules. The first is our software defined perimeter, which is what I'm alluding to now saying, okay, uh, you know, traditionally, if you had four locations, you had four networks set up and then you'd have to figure out how do we get our remote employees into these networks with our software defined perimeter, you build your network in the cloud and that's where it lives. Your corporate network now lives in the cloud. And now it's just a matter of access. We, and we have several ways to access that, either through a hardware uh, bridge or appliance that goes on site. So your IoT devices, your printers, copiers, et cetera, have access to the corporate network or through an agent that runs on your machine. The agent then leads into our second kind of big uh, uh, pillar of capabilities and that's secure remote access. Hmm. If you look at VPN today, traditional VPN solutions, uh, you know, they were built for a different time. And the threat landscape was different. You know, before, uh, you know, you look back at two years ago, people primarily worked in the office and you had a very small minority of your workforce that may run a VPN. Today, it's the majority. And that technology hasn't changed yet. At the same time, MSPs are put in a position, they got to run split tunnel, uh, for example, which number one is becoming a compliance challenge. But number two, you're essentially uh, just poked a hole in your perimeter for your users to just bring garbage back into the corporate network. It's a, it's a new attack or a threat vector. And so the software defined perimeter, there's a host of capabilities there, secure remote access, uh, zero trust security. We could double click on that. Uh, Control one allows you to adopt a zero trust security posture. And we have several capabilities, not a single one because zero trust is a framework uh, as a unified threat management component. And so all the things that you would expect on on a true corporate network, IPS, DNS and content filtering, DLP, all those things exist. And then what's, what's amazing about all this is we bring all this together and provide actionable intelligence to where in the past, as you mentioned at the top of the call, you have a, 
a, a Jenga tower of tools, you have no visibility at the end of the day. You've got to log into different places. We bring all this together into a single, uh, a single pane of glass, as you said, where you can view every session for every user and every device uh, and, and, it ha and see end to end, it, as soon as the user made the request, every security sensor that interrogated it and what the disposition was. Um, and then you can figure out, then you can take action on it. If something was blocked, you could figure out why, what's the reputation score. You could, um, you could add it to an exception or allow list. And then uh, the last thing, and then we can move on is the is security posture management. The other thing that we're hearing from MSPs is compliance is becoming a really big burden. And how do, as MSPs, how do we navigate this? And because the tools that you're deploying today, um, you know, as an MSP, put us in a position where we lack visibility. We have a hard time demonstrating that we're meeting uh, the covenants that, uh, that were required or the covenants requirements of a given compliance standard. And so with security posture management, we're essentially making it easy for MSPs to maintain compliance, uh, whether that CMMC, HIPAA, it, it doesn't matter. And so that, that's the other component. It really, so it's really everything you need to run a secure modern network uh, and, and extend access. So it's interesting because you mentioned a, a whole host of solutions that usually are, are either cobbled together, as we've said, yeah. or sometimes we even simply say, I don't have, like, let's say DLP, like maybe I don't have a great MSP friendly DLP solution. So we just won't include that in our yeah. offering as much as I want to. I can't find a, a vendor that will work with me and my size clients, et cetera. And so as you were going through the, the litany of tools that is inside of one solution, which I'm sure is part of why it's called Control One, um, I'm yeah. like, okay, there's a lot of pieces that that I can hear my clients checking off in, in one mm -hmm. fell swoop, which, which I love. Now, you hinted at compliance. I want to take that in a little bit of a different direction. So compliance is its own skill set and expertise, but so is security. And so that's yeah. one of the things that I hear from, from my MSP world is, you know, I'm not a security expert. So I, I know my mm -hmm. clients need this and I'm stacking together solutions, but I don't know what I don't know. And so am I going yeah. to see gaps? So I, I don't have a SIM in place. So how am I going to see if there's issues? So how how does or, or does Control One address that um, challenge in the marketplace today? So I think if you look at both compliance and security, we, let me start by saying this. When we, when we started to build uh, Control One, it was number one, informed and influenced by the broader community itself, as we've already discussed. But our primary design principle from the beginning, before we ever wrote a line of code, before we ever started mocking up wireframes was the solution has to be dead simple. And your most junior resource as an MSP has to be able to deploy and manage uh, on an ongoing basis your customer's networks. Today, you know, you're, you've know you got expensive resources that are constantly being drug in uh, to to tasks that your help desk, for example, should be able to manage. And so the thought process is a tier one help desk technician should be able to build and manage the network, bringing up your more expensive resources for bigger project work uh, or evaluating larger tools. So I'll start with that. And so if you, if you use that as the, the lens to look through and extend that to your, to your question, compliance is hard and security is hard. And so what we've done is we've taken all the capabilities that I shared and all the best practices. And really what we've done is we've made them relevant to this community and we've made them dead simple for MSPs to consume. And so if you take security, for example, we have smart defaults uh, all across the board. So MSP, a lot of MSPs today may be deploying a, uh, a network appliance that does DLP, but they may lack the skill set or the time to go configure that correctly. Well, Control One out of the gate comes with smart defaults that are pre-programmed uh, that essentially get you on, on the right path. And if you look through the security policies uh, in, in Control One, whether it's our IPS sensors, DLP, our TLS inspection, you know, 80, 86% of uh, malicious payloads are coming over secure, uh, you know, SSL or uh, TLS uh, uh, connections. And so if you're not decrypting and inspecting it, that traffic is coming right on through. And so... But MSPs have a really tough time with that. Certificate management, like dealing with the exceptions, there are things that you can't inspect. The fact that we have all this built in out of the gate 
where there are smart defaults that you can just turn it on and it works. And if you want to start tuning it and making changes, you can do that. And you're going to get nudges and hints along the way that, hey, this may not be as secure. Maybe this is more secure. Like, here's the implications of making this change. It's very, very simple. Yeah, I think and Jennifer, saying, one thing, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, one thing I'll add back to, to tie back to a comment you made earlier when we, when we conceptualized what Control One or how Control One needed to address the problem. It, it, to your point, today, the, the MSP not only has to know how to use the tools, but has to know to go look for certain tools. Um, I'm sure there's some people listening to this right now thinking, well, what is DLP and do I have that? Um, <laughs> and, and so I think the difference in, in what Zane's describing is that con Control One is inherently secure and has these components because they need to be there. They, they, there's not an optionality around how you think about whether or not you need unified threat management. Do, do I need to be scanning the traffic? Like we are and we will and we do. Um, and these policies and smart defaults are to allow the flexibility for MSPs to deploy it in unique environments. Because as we said, there's, you know, they, they, there's not a homogenous environment. Each customer is different. And so you can customize it. But at its core, every business needs reliable connectivity and security. And the components that Zane's walking through aren't, aren't optional. Uh, there's, there's no optionality now that an MSP can say, well, I don't really want to think about zero trust, or I just want to allow everyone into the network. And so the control one platform enables that, uh, as an example, in the zero trust side, you, you, any MSP you talk to would tell you that we don't want laptops that aren't patched on the network. Like they've got to stay patched and we want to make sure the RMM agent is deployed. Of course we do. And if it's a laptop, the hard drive shall be encrypted. That sounds fine. But if you're if you're the MSP, again, not the Fortune you know, 500 CSO, like you can't mandate that. They're not your employees. It's your customer. And so how, how do you accomplish that? It's extremely difficult. And Control One has that functionality built in natively with device, device posture checks so that you can define as an MSP, these are the rules at which the devices need to adhere to to be able to gain access. And if they don't adhere to those rules, the MSP can choose what happens. You can keep it out completely. You can isolate it into its own micro segmented environment so that the MSP could troubleshoot and the only traffic that can come and go is the RMM tool. And you can even control that to a business that operates in the state of Louisiana. Only devices that are getting an IP address physically in Louisiana are allowed to connect. If someone leaves the state, they can't get into the network, just like a credit card fraud protection and the MSP can say, allow. We, we've brought that to reality now so that MSPs can not only have the conversation about these are good practices, but can now enforce it and achieve that goal in a very simplistic way because of the focus we put on making everything easy to use. I love it. So what I'm hearing is, is a lot of times MSPs have this ideal, but they don't have a way to realize that. And so you've taken that ideal and married it with the real. And, and now it's like, okay, yes, that is a great idea. We all know that we shouldn't let unpatched laptops join the network. Now we just won't. We simply won't allow unpatched network, uh, unpatched laptops to join the network. So I love right. it. And and an example of that, I'll tee this up because this is something I was really interesting how we saw for, and, and uh, I'll, I'll tee it up for Zane here because he had a lot of passion around making this real. When, when you think as an MSP, I have a headquarters and I have a remote device, an MSP can say, I need them connected, I need them secure. And the steps to take today are to deploy UTMs, connect them with firewalls, and then all the steps that come along with that. I need build the VPN tunnel. I have to deal with what kind of WAN connection I have. I, if I have more than one connection, I've got to deal with failover. And now I've got to put in pre-shared keys to decide if I need this on Keep Alive or not and repeat that every single time. And it was mm -hmm. rebuilding the product. I remember Zane emphatically said to the team, like that has to be able to happen in a user interface by dragging a line between one side and the other. Uh, and and it's at the time like, okay, um, how's that going to happen? Um, but yeah, Zane, maybe talk about like the UI of this, I think is, is sort of some magic around it. It does what it visually shows. So control one shows you visually what the network looks like and connecting site one to site two is just connect them together and they're done. It, everything happens in the back end, just magically uh, to your point, Jennifer, and it, it allows an MSP to not have to know all the nuances downstream, but I want them securely connected. So just drag between them. So yeah, 
Yeah, I was saying, Zane, go ahead and take that. I'm, I'm curious how that conversation went and what was happening in your head as you were saying, well, I just want to draw a line and make it happen. <laughs> well, this is, this is the joy about first principles, right? When you establish first principles, there's not a lot to argue about. And so what did we say first principles were? Like tier one has to be able to support and manage this. And like John just gave a kind of tops of the wave summary of the things you have to do if you have multiple sites, for example. And that doesn't sound like something a tier one technician can manage. So we've already agreed that tier one, you know, junior resources have to be able to manage this. So we've got to figure it out. It's up to us to solve this challenge. And so, yeah, as John mentioned, the, uh, you know, the, again, the, the corporate network is moved to the cloud. It's all defined visually. Now you can go through and you, you can, you know, go through the list and build it. But, uh, you know, what we're seeing all from all of our, all of our early access partners, you just build the network visually. It's drag and drop. You, um, you want a new segment or zone or subnet, you just drag and drop and, I mean, it, it automatically configures. A new site, you can literally set up a new site uh, in, in less than 30 seconds. And to connect those two sites, is exactly as John mentioned, it's two clicks to be able to click from Dallas to Houston. Those two locations can now talk to each other. And then now it's just a matter of, okay, we've set up, the network is built, we've got all of our sites created. You know, you, you iterate through those Dallas, Houston, Austin, San Antonio. See if you're a regional office here in Texas, you connect them together how you see fit. And by, by the way, we support segmentation and micro segmentation. You only want to support the zones or segments that, that make sense. You're not opening up the whole, the whole network. But then you start layering on the security that we've been talking about. And you would start thinking about zero trust. I mentioned earlier, zero trust is, is a framework it's not a given tool, and, and it's essentially a, the framework basically uh, suggests that we should move towards a default uh, deny posture versus default allow. If you look at all the networks, nearly all the networks that MSPs support today, they are in a default allow state. If I can plug into the switch, if I can get on Wi-Fi, I can access everything on this network. That means if my device is compromised, it spreads laterally. This is where... Uh, you know, this is how ransomware spreads and where we see time and time and time again, companies get, uh, get in trouble. And so the network has been built. Now let's apply zero trust. One, one way we do that is by what John already mentioned, device posture check. Default deny. We're not going to allow anything on the network that doesn't meet our pre-approved uh, conditions. And you teed it up well, Jennifer. It's like, here are the things that we know we want to have happen. And now you have the tool, the resource to be able to enforce and explicitly say, if the patch, if the Windows version is in X or better, if the AV, uh, you know, AV is not running, if my EDR switch is not running, if my RMM agent that is not only installed, it has to be running. All these things, disk encryption, you know, there's a whole list of things you can add, but if these things don't match, don't allow it on the network. That's, that's one capability in the zero, under the zero trust umbrella, but the other is zero trust network access where if you think about it, 98% of the users that access, 98% uh, of the users MSP support need access to either the internet or maybe a single server on site for a client server application. And so with, with zero trust network access, you can limit that scope and say, okay, only these users can access this server and they can get out to the internet, which of course everything is gonna be is passed through our inspection uh, and security engines. And so there's no way for anything to move laterally. And the last thing is with when we talk about secure remote access, now that we've built this network in the cloud, access is really just an implementation detail. It's super simple. Whether you have multiple sites or remote users that you install the agent on their laptop, if you're running the, the, the laptop, or if you're in a laptop running the agent, you're a remote worker, let's say you're on a plane in a coffee shop, what you want to guard against is, I don't want to be sitting on an airplane or a coffee shop and you know, a bad actor jump on my machine and get back to the corporate network. And so as an MSP, you would enable Wi-Fi protection. And that essentially makes that machine invisible uh, to that local network. And so that's, those are just some of the things that we're doing in the zero trust, uh, in the zero trust bucket there. I love it. So, so we've talked, um, I feel like we could talk for another hour, but I don't want to take that much of your time. But one of the things that's super fascinating about Control One is, is how visual it is. I'm a visual learner. Um, I am not a networking specialist. And, and mm -hmm. it is 
it almost reminds me of Canva, where it's just like, just drag a line. Now, now these devices yeah. are connected. And so, um, but for that reason, I think MSPs really need a demo because this is very outside of the box from, from how a lot of solutions are. So what's, what is the best way to get a demo or to get more information on Control One and, and uh, how, to, how to learn more about it? Yeah, if you visit Citricom.com, up at the top, you'll see that you can learn about UCAS or the security and networking solutions available through Control One. Just navigate over to the Control One side, you can read more, and there's an option there to request a demo. We'll connect you on with a product specialist, and we'll show you the capabilities firsthand, and we can even go through some specific scenarios that individual MSPs may be up against and tools that we may be using. And show you exactly how they're addressed inside Control One. And, um, and to your point, show you some of the, the magic of what we can do in a visual interface where all of the capabilities are just there. Uh, it's, it's a really neat thing to say for sure. I love it. Amazing. Zane, John, thank you so much for your time today and sharing a little bit about your vision for, for the tool. Maybe we will talk in another six or eight months and find out what new things have come out, maybe get a little bit of a sneak peek on the on the vision of the future, but I'll, I'll leave that for another conversation. But for now, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Jennifer. Come back anytime. Thanks.